Good evening and welcome. You're watching Be the People. I'm Rishika Barua. The Supreme Court of India has upheld the two-child policy in Rajasthan. The court has said that the two-child eligibility criteria of the Rajasthan government for seeking public employment is not discriminatory and does not violate the constitution. The court also said that denying government benefits to those who have more than two kids is not illegal and that the objective here is to promote family planning. This was in response to a plea that was filed by an ex-serviceman who was denied the job of a constable on grounds of having more than two children. Now, India does not have a two-child policy at the national level. There are currently nine states as per our calculation which have their own such policy. Those states are there on your screens right now. These are the states which have a two-child policy in the country. This includes some of the most popular states like Uttar Pradesh, even Madhya Pradesh and several other states in the country. There are three states of Chhattisgarh, Haryana and Himachal Pradesh, interestingly, that have revoked the two-child policy. They had the policy, they don't have it anymore. So, what is the two-child policy? It is essentially a government-imposed limitation on having two kids per family. How does the government really do this? They give incentives to families with two kids and take away rights and incentives like government employment or the eligibility to contest local polls or take away subsidies etc. from those people who have more than two children or sometimes a lot of these free education benefits for instance don't apply to the third child. So while there is no pan-India policy in place yet, there are few states like I said which have their own bouquet of limitations that they seek to impose on families with more than two children. Now interestingly, the two-child policy has been tabled over 35 times in parliament since independence but hasn't come into force at the national level which obviously points to the fact that the debate around the two-child policy is nuanced and dare I say complicated. Well, let's look at the larger context. India is now the most populous country in the world overtaking China but our fertility rate is on the decline and our population with or without these measures is also expected to start declining by 2060. So do we need such a policy? Does it actually help solve the population problem? And more importantly, are we doing enough to offset the wider social, religious, political, health and even gender ramifications of such a policy? While the arguments in favour of implementing a two-child policy are pretty clear, and this is in tune with the national population policy to reduce and stabilise India's population by 2045, what does this policy mean for gender equality? Will it further render women more vulnerable to unsafe abortions? What about the right to reproductive freedom and privacy? And also, how does this play out for minority communities with a target on their back for trying to outnumber the majority? Like I said, the debate here is nuanced. So on the show tonight, we ask, is a two-child policy progressive or coercive? Joining us on the broadcast, we have Poonam Mutreja. She's the Executive Director of the Population Foundation of India. Zakia Soman, activist and member of the Bharatiya Muslim Mahila Andolan. Abha Singh, advocate and women's rights activist. And in a short while from now, we hope to be joined by S.Y. Qureshi, former Chief Election Commissioner of India. He's also written a book called The Population Myth, Islam, Family Planning and Politics in India. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, we also have with us members in the audience in the studio here in Delhi. Uh, among audience members, we also have uh, some representatives from an NGO called Sakshi. They are working very closely with women's rights, women's education and women's security in the national capital. Thank you all very much for being with us. Poonam Mutreja, I want to begin by asking you the two-child policy. Very simply, as someone who understands the finer nuances of the issue, will it work? Is it our, is it our only solution to the population problem? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say it will not work. And it is not the only solution. We have many other solutions. Let me um, start by saying that the Supreme Court judgment is highly disappointing as it contravenes the International Conference for Development where India is one of the 189 countries that signed on to not having any incentives and disincentives. Let me explain why I believe it won't work. 
first of all it is you said it's nuanced and complicated it is also unnecessary and why do i say it's unnecessary the if you look at the nfhs data the majority of indian women families want less than two children when women don't have access to family planning or the agency to practice family planning how can you blame the women for the number of children they have or in families second in india as well as the rest of the world um education is seen as the best contraceptive or any pill that a woman uh, needs for empowerment a community needs the country needs third the women in india <clears throat> uh don't have access to temporary methods as much as they should especially young women young girls who marry early are expected to have babies very early we spend very little money on uh, our family planning program especially the temporary methods so under these circumstances how can you have a situation where you're imposing a two child norm and finally look at china you know in a country like china apart from an aging population and decline in a working age population they have had very extremely adverse sex ratios india is a country that also has very high uh, sun preference in a situation like that if people were to have one child or two child policy then there'll be more boys born and less girls which will be extremely disturbing for our birth ratios and when china we should learn from china's mistakes and not think about emulating them and the data shows there is nothing in the indian demographic data which is very rich which shows there's any need for coercive measures and this will be anti women and anti poor okay very strong arguments and you know just because you talked about the china policy we've got that graphic on air as well but they introduced a one child policy in the 70s then introduced a two child policy in 2013 and now i think as of 2021 they have a three child policy in place and their current fertility rate is at 1.7 india's a two this is just for context uh, for the benefit of our viewers uh, abha singh would you agree punam with punam mutreja's point that education is the best contraceptive a two child policy is just not going to work in india i don't think so i mean supreme court is very right when it says that whatever uh, uh, rules have been imposed by rajasthan government pertaining to two child policy it has upheld that in fact i would like to draw your attention that every third child in india is stunted and every second woman in india is anemic we are 101 rank on the global hunger index so you 51% of our children are exposed to hunger and malnutrition at a time when we cannot cater to the present children why are we producing more that is my question i think two child policy is required because wherever you have seen that uh, the states like the south states the uh, south states of south india where there's high education there is um, uh, literacy population is down so that clearly shows that the states like uttar pradesh are, are lagging behind and that is the reason we need a two child norm we are talking of reproductive freedom but do women in india have reproductive freedom my learned friend herself said that there's something called sun meta preference so where women are pressurized to have more children because the need for the sun is so high so at that time this law would come to their benefit and also these incentives because if you are cutting down the subsidies you don't let them uh, contest panchayat elections i think we require certain strict laws because voluntary things don't happen that fast so i feel it is necessary the two child norm and okay. if we talk of equality it is imposed on one and all so uh, if we keep waiting for voluntary measures it's going to be long and long and when we are talking of 5 trillion economy i think the time has come that we actually cut down on the population because okay. you are we violating the rights of the children by producing 8 9 children in a family so when you have less of uh, uh, oxygen the way pollution is happening you have less of food why are you producing children to have them stunted and malnourished You know it's very interesting because both of you have given a a pro women argument but with with very very different uh, 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 you know with with very different arguments one staunchly against and one staunchly in favor of the policy so interesting to hear what both of you have had to say Zakia Soman 
you've heard what both uh, Poonam Mutreja and Abha Singh have said. They're, they're, on, they're on completely opposite sides as far as this policy decision is concerned. But the heart and, uh, uh, you know, is, is really at the interest of the woman over here. And we will move beyond the realm of that aspect of this conversation as well. But how do you look at this? Do you see this as something which is going to be progressive, as Abha Singh has said, something which is perhaps a need of the hour? Or do you think what Poona Mutreja said perhaps makes more sense? That how could you put the onus on the women when you don't have measures available, when you don't have enough health and safety measures available to implement and see through such a policy at a national yeah. level? Uh, so I, I really appreciate uh, the concerns that both of them have expressed and they are very valid. Yes. Uh, I think, Rishika, in the public discourse, uh, we have... Uh, uh, this talk, you know, from the, you know, loose talk about two-child norm. But we don't have any clarity as to why we are aspiring towards a two-child two, two norm. What is it that we hope to achieve? And what is, uh, you know, right now, uh, uh, deprivation, uh, socio-economic deprivation, cultural factors, what are the reasons for people to have more than two, two children? And who exactly are those people who go in for this kind of, a, uh, if, uh, you know, for the lack of a better word, for this kind of safety net of children. So then uh, when we analyze that, we will realize that it is it is indeed uh, cultural factors, but it is equally economic deprivation and social factors, such as was mentioned by Ms. Mutreja, the preference for a male child, which sort of forces uh, uh, couples from uh, a poor background, from rural background to go in for more children. And the north-south divide also gets heightened over there. But uh, uh, to sort of come out with a, a solution such as a, a forced kind, enforced kind of a two-child norm, I think that would at all uh, not that would not at all be a good idea, because uh, uh, as as has been explained by Dr. Kureshi in his book, that uh, India's population levels are coming to a very very acceptable level. And there are several myths about, uh, uh, you know, why people have more children, which communities have more children. Uh, I think uh, they are based more in politics rather than in, rather than in facts. So I think any kind of a ban would be coercive and would have, uh, would prove counterproductive rather than, you know, help the purpose of gender equality and for equality for uh, the uh, citizens from the marginalized communities who have not been able to get a fair share of the socio-economic development pie in our country. So I think uh, the truth is somewhere uh, not so, uh, not so. It's not uh, black and uh, white. Yes, yes, yes. So. Well, like I said at the outset in my introduction that, you know, you will, uh, because as I read about this issue, I realized that it's, it's not black and white. It's very complicated and very nuanced. And I think that's the reason we're having this conversation. Uh, Professor Ashwai Kureshi, uh, to you, because, you know, you've really delved deep into this issue. I want to ask you two, two very simple questions. One, uh, given the fertility rate in India right now, do we even need a population control policy? And two, how does this tie in with an anti-minority argument? Because there's a lot that's been written about how there are many political tones and colours to this. Could you elaborate on both those aspects, please? Yeah. Rishika, you posed the very correct question, uh, your first question, whether we really need it. Uh, we needed this debate 30 years ago. And for the last 30 years, politicians have been quiet. We did a study. Uh, there was a committee formed by NIHFW, National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, under my chairmanship about 10 years ago to find out what is the attitude of the politicians. And we found after the emergency, it has become a uh, taboo subject for the politicians. And we examined the parliament questions asked for four parliaments, uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And you'll be shocked to know that only 0.15% of all questions were on family planning. They did not want to talk of family planning. And that was the time when we needed to talk of family planning. Now that we have achieved that uh, desired TFR already, 25 states have gone below the desired TFR. Yes. Only the four or five states of the Hindi belt uh, are uh, lagging behind. And once they catch up, where we will be the thinking in the reverse how to stop the, the decline in the population. Right. Therefore, uh, this debate at the moment, it is only for political purposes, just to keep the pot boiling all these while they were uh, silent. Now suddenly uh, they, they started talking of a population policy. Right. And your second question, compulsion. 
this which has been answered by my three colleagues here there was a study by the senior is officer in madhya pradesh nirmala butch of five state where compulsion was introduced that anybody who has more than two children will be debarred from contesting election for them contesting election was more important than having the wife so many of them started divorcing their wives many of them gave away their children in uh, uh, adoption so it uh, worked against women so uh, uh, nobody has studied the problem and they superficially just to keep uh, some communal cauldron yes. boiling uh, they are bringing up an issue our family planning program has been a great success india was the first country to start the national family program family planning program the target laid down in 2002 we have already achieved and uh, 25 states have gone further, further down this debate is uh, now absolutely unnecessary okay and why do you say that this is a debate that is closely linked with the politics of the day because yeah because the, when the, this problem does not exist anymore we have already achieved the ta desired tfr which was our goal for 2010 in the national family health population policy of 2000 yes. under mr vajpayee we achieved that target not in 2010 but 5 years later but we achieved it all the same and uh, we should be celebrating this success okay. and now the population will consolidate in another 15 20 years because obviously the children born 15 20 years ago will now be producing children yes. but 20 years down the line it will stabilize and then it will start declining okay and finally the china you know we were very proudly always saying hey, look china, look at china one child policy one child policy and somebody rightly mentioned in 2013 they went back to two child policy yes. and uh, even that failed they have gone to three, three child, three child Yes. Three child. So, if China is our model, learn from them. Yes. Why did they have to reverse it? Okay, I'll 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 come back uh, to Abha Singh because Abha Singh, I think uh, you know you're you're the only person on the panel who's very staunchly supported the policy, saying that we absolutely need it, and you made very strong arguments at the outset as well. How would you like to respond to what the other panelists have said? That you know we don't we don't really need this policy anymore because we're doing okay without. a policy in place which is actually dictating uh you know whether a, whether a family needs to have two or three children and also the argument that zakia suman made which is very interesting which is who does this policy really apply to and why is it that there are people who have more than two children if at all abha singh you know number one uh, comparing with china i would beg to differ that's a dictatorship where the thing the manner in which things are imposed we don't have in a democracy like india so uh, um, uh, need of the hour we have to go by that the manner in which um, uh, there is unemployment i mean the states which are the states five states which we talked of which have the higher than the tfr is bihar meghalaya uttar pradesh jharkhand and manipur see what's happening in manipur unemployment see what's happening in up crime see what's happening in bihar so you have to correlate the two things if you say no it will happen in next 20 years it will happen in next 40 years my issue is today till the time we don't uh, tackle the problem right now it's going to go out of hand uh, the, the, the fertility rate may have come down but it has come down after 13 states as you said have stuck to a two child policy states like rajasthan where they stopped giving incentives they 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 made the rule that you cannot take part in the local elections the panchayat elections if you have more than two children so if you go by other states like andhra pradesh gujarat odisha they have tried to handle this and now if we implement this pan india this court judgment also came because this was a matter pertaining to rajasthan and supreme court rightly said Puna that how Bhutteja, does it, however has argued that it's it's something that that has not worked that even the states which have had this policy in place it's not like this is the reason why these why why we are seeing that curve stabilize punam mutreja do you do you no, just want to explain yes, that yes absolutely you know the 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 curve has stabilized abha in states where they had better governance they had education for women they had better health services and they had they were more pro women you see if you look at the data and indicator indicators for the five states which still have high fertility rates it's because we have an invested in the education women and most importantly i'd like to say to abha who i really respect and agree with on everything she says normally 
today we we have to debate and i hope no, this debate will continue but abha is, how abha i want to say to you no. how do you abha tackle patriarchy you which that, wants a son sorry how do you tackle patriarchy which wants a son at any cost yeah do you, you tackle patriarchy by educating women you know educated women will not have more than two children at an average even if they don't have a son while an a, a illiterate woman who's class 5 who studied class 5 is likely to have three or more children and the second thing is that you know the aspirations of women in india and especially yes. girls thanks to the exposure they've had to the media have really changed okay. they want to be educated they want to work and finally i want to say that you know we have to Uh, provide for nutrition for everything for the child who's born you yes. cannot discriminate against the third child okay. even if he or she is born I, and not I give them nutrition. education okay. not I, give them nutrition. i would i would i would i would love to carry on i would love to carry on this conversation with both of you but you we have, have audience kind of members we have audience members and let's let let's also just, just let's also just listen to what the people have to say about this issue मेरा नाम माया है मैं साक्षी अंजय से हूँ मेरे ख्याल से तो दो बच्चे जो प्लान है दो बच्चों का वो बहुत अच्छा है क्योंकि दो बच्चे रहेंगे तो हम अच्छे से उनकी पढ़ाई करा सकते हैं अच्छे से उनको पहना उड़ा सकते हैं अच्छा खाना खिला सकते हैं और उनको बहुत मतलब केयर भी अच्छे से कर सकते okay. हैं लेकिन जब ज़्यादा होंगे तो प्रॉब्लम तो खड़ी होगी ही ओके okay. मेरे ख्याल से तो दो बिल्कुल ठीक है ओके okay. आप कुछ कहना चाहते हैं हेलो मैम मेरा नाम दीक्षा है ये जो टू टू चाइल्ड पॉलिसी पॉलिसी इस पर मैं ये कहना चाहूँगी कि अगर ये पॉलिसी के कारण बहुत सारे जो अवॉशन है वो उसकी क्वांटिटी बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ जाएगी क्योंकि इंडिया में बहुत सारी जगह ऐसे ऐसी है जहाँ पे लोग लड़कों की चाह रखते हैं okay. तो उस पर भी ये बहुत गहरा प्रभाव पड़ सकता है आगे जेंटलमैन ऑल्सो वीव टू गिव चांस इज वेल जी यस नमस्कार मैम बोलिए बोलिए आई डॉक्टर अरुण कुमार सिंह माय क्वेश्चन इज लेट अस अज्यूम दैट वी वी आर इन फेवर ऑफ टू चाइल्ड पॉलिसी बट व्हेन वी टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंसेंटिव लाइक गवर्नमेंट जॉब एंड गवर्नमेंट सर्विसेज सो दोज हु डू नॉट वांट टू गवर्नमेंट जॉब एंड गवर्नमेंट सर्विसेज देन व्हाट वी हैव द क्लॉज फॉर दैट दैट फेलो ओके देयर वेल द गवर्नमेंट इज ओनली ट्राइंग टू इंपोज द रिस्ट्रिक्शंस व्हिच आर आई सपोज विद इन द एंबिट ऑफ द कंट्रोल यू नो लाइक आई सेड दिस हैज बीन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कन्वर्सेशन बिकॉज़ यू हर्ड ऑल साइड्स of the story i'm afraid i'm completely out of time but the audience has had their say and you've heard it from the experts as well we leave you the viewer to make up your mind on what you think about this policy that's all the time we have on be the people tonight thanks so much for tuning in